It's going to cost you something. If you if you want a good walk with the Lord, now I'm telling you, there's going to be hell in the hallway. There's going to be people come against you. There's going to be things said in your life, but you got to you got to outlive that. You got to you got you got to outlive that that stuff. So tonight, what I want to give you is, is talking about prayer. Our title tonight is "What's Your Ten Twenty." There's uh, truck drivers, they got this thing that they always say, breaker, breaker, what's your 1020 or whatever. And uh, how would you know what I'm talking about means what's your location, right? And uh, so, yes, you have. And, uh, um, but anyway, what's your 1020? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, say, what's your 1020? Yeah. What's your location? Where are you at? Yeah. You're at Elkhorn, but I'm going to ask you something deeper. How much time have you spent in the presence of God today without a guitar in your hand, but without being behind a set of drums, without saying, listen, because what we do, we justify too much. We come to church and say, well, Brian, my goodness, I've been at church today. The devil came to church. Well, Brian, I, I studied the Bible. The devil knows more scripture than all of us put together. But one thing the devil will not do he will not fall on his knees and he will not pray, pray to Jesus. He will not cry out, Abba, Daddy. He will not cry out, God, I, I need you. I need more of you. And today, tonight, you, you, you're probably going to sit and say, well, Brian, I, I know we need to pray. We'll do it. What's it going to take to get the church praying? I'm talking about in, in early church days, in church history, when I studied this in college, every Wednesday night they would call it prayer meeting. That's where we got that good old word from, prayer meeting. And what they would do for an hour straight, and sometimes even longer than that. But what they would do, they would come to church, they would gather at the altar, and do nothing but pray and seek the presence of the Lord. I'm not talking about you praying when you're in trouble. I'm not talking about you praying just because it's, it's time to eat your supper or whatever. I'm talking about today. You, only you can answer this. How much time? Have you spent today in prayer? I bet you if we went around this room tonight, right now, even though we've been at church all day and it's Sunday, the first day of the week, we would be so surprised. I bet you probably all of us in here today together, we probably not spent an hour in prayer. An hour. You say, well, Brian, there's 168 hours in a week. You're exactly right. <laughs> we sleep a lot of those. We work a lot of those. But I'm telling you the secret. Y'all listen to me. I'm not trying to be a guru or a Jesus Junior tonight. But I'm telling you the biggest secret that you have in your life, the biggest thing that you can do in your life to get closer to the Lord is have a sweet hour of prayer. Talk to the Lord. Now, I, I remember uh, when I was probably about 14 or 15 years of age, I was at uh, my mom's church. And... Uh, the pastor told me, he said, tonight you're going to pray. Well, Lord, I was scared to death. I was 14, 15 years of age and really didn't know how to pray all that good. And I'm working on it right now. But here's what really got me. I look back over, I wrote this down before I even came over tonight. I remember the process that the pastor gave me. Here was the process that the pastor gave me. He said, you meet with me before service. We will sit down together and we will write down your prayer. And then when the service is uh, starting, you'll come up, wait for the nod. When you see the nod, that's when you say, dear Lord. And so, man, I was nervous. I had his, his sermon. I had his, I, not his sermon, but his prayer. He helped me write it. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I, the Lord wants to hear from me. The Lord wants me to, he wants to hear from me. He wants to hear from you in this house tonight. He wants you one-on-one, -on -one, behind the closed door, shut the door, and hear straight from your heartbeat. Isn't that a good word? That God wants to hear straight from you. And all of a sudden, I got up there scared to death, and I got behind the big old honking pulpit, and barely, you just probably see my head just sticking over the pulpit, and I looked over there at the pastor, and he went like this. He nodded. I had the prayer on my on, on, on paper, and I started, I was like this. I said, Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Dear God, I thank you for my church. Thank you for my mama. Thank you for everything. And Lord, I thank you for Pastor. And Lord, I thank you for the word he's going to give tonight. And all of a sudden I was down and I lost my place. 
I lost my spot. I lost what the pastor had wrote down for me to pray. And all of a sudden, I was sitting there going, oh, no. And you know, as a 14, 15-year-old kid, you're sitting there going, oh, God, they're looking at me. And, Lord, my ears are turning red. And, Lord, do I run? Do I sit down? Do I shut up? Do I say amen? Oh, me? Oh, my? What do I do? And the pastor was sitting there going, like that. And I lost my place. And I was looking at him. And I looked at Mama. Mama was sitting there going, go, go, go. And they didn't know what to do. But what I learned just tonight before I came over, the reason why... I, I, the reason why it worked out the way it worked out is because it wasn't from my heart. It wasn't my prayer. It was somebody else's prayer. So a lot of times, what we do as Christians, and I have been as guilty as you have been in this room tonight also. We, we, we Here's our prayers. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. I love you. And we're so routine, we know exactly what we're going to say before we say it. So what I'm learning, I'm going to give you my heartbeat tonight, what I do when I pray. Because I don't want a, a prayer out of routine. I don't want somebody else's prayer. I don't want somebody else's notes on how to pray. So thank God for all the books, but watch this. God taught us how to pray. God taught me how to pray. So I'm going to give it to you tonight. Matthew chapter 6, real quick. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. It says these words in verse 5. And when you pray, and when you pray, do not be like the, the hypocrites. Uh-oh. For they love, watch this, they love. They love attention. They love babbling words. They love people to look at them. And they love, they got to be the center of the stage. And I know y'all's mind, your mind's like mine. You're sitting there going, I know them people. Me too. Me too. Watch this. He says, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, in the church. That's what that means. Or even on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. Wow. Verse 6, but when you pray, listen to this, but when you pray, you go into your room, into your closet, you close the door, and you pray to your Father who is unseen. Then, then your Father who sees what is done in what? In secret, watch this, in secret will reward you. What he sees in private time, oh my God, in private time, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, in the closet, shut the door. Nobody's looking. He says, then your father, he, he sees you. He knows your heart. He knows what you're praying. But watch this. I love this. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling. How many of you know, man, people? <laughs> man, they'll be going to pray over the food, and they'll pray 30 minutes. Listen, I, I'm not going to be tough tonight. If it's spirit-led, praise be unto God. But here's what I am telling you is this. He said, don't you be like the old pagans, old hypocrites. How many of you know God knows your heart? How many of you know you say, Lord, thank you for this food. I praise you, God. Thank you for this day. Amen. God knows that. But a lot of times people sit there and they babble and they babble and they babble. And listen, here's where it's going to get sticky in here tonight. You're going to say, well, Brian, how do I have a sweet hour of prayer if I'm not going to be babbling? It is spirit-led. Listen to me. It's got to be a spirit-led church. You've got to have a spirit-led prayer life. What's this? I, I know musicians. I'm not going to lie. They can get up there and they can play every instrument on the stage. All that is is music. I'm looking for a praise team that's had a sweet hour of prayer. I'm looking for a praise team not just to get up here and sing a song, but to lead us into the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen? There's a difference in, in the special singing and the spirit-led singing. Here it is. There's, there, there's, there's difference in that. And there are difference in prayers too. The Bible talks very specific about how to pray, when to pray, and when you pray. Because see, I think you get more done in private than you do in open. And I'm going to hit some issues tonight that a lot of churches don't hear. But I'm going to preach it and teach it straight out of the Word. 
So tonight I want to show you something. There's three, three things we need to understand about prayer. Number one is this. What's your motive? What's your motive? Real quick, all right? Notice all through chapter 6, and you can go back and you can read this, but all through chapter 6, God says, when? When? When you pray, when you fast, when you tithe. He, watch this. He's, it's not an option. See, as a Christian, what we, what we should say is this. It is a blessing for me to go into my closet and shut the door and to pray and to get in the presence of God. It is not an obligation. <laughs> really and truly, I'm going to be honest with you, it really shouldn't even be a sacrifice. Really, it's something that is in me that's got to come out of me because I love the Lord so much, I've got to hear His voice. I've got to be in His presence. Y'all know what I'm talking about tonight? Yeah, yeah, amen. Statistics say that the average pastor prays five to ten minutes a day. No wonder God's not moving. Men of God of your household, I'm going to ask you, if you want God to move in your household, you've got to be praying men. You've got to know when your babies are sick that you go up there and pray and plead the blood of God over their lives. You've got to know when the enemy is coming into your house to sift you and to tear you apart that prayer, hallelujah, at the name of Jesus, that devil has to flee. Amen? At the name of Jesus. You've got to, pray. You've got to have a prayer life. You gotta have a prayer life. So many churches are stinking worried about speaking in tongues and a prayer closet prayer about babbling that they lose the main thing. Watch this. I just want you to pray. I don't give the gift, He gives the gift. Just pray. Just pray. Just pray. But I think the main thing that you guys can get tonight when I read Matthew chapter, chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. He said these words, I really believe, but everything you're praying right now, ask yourself these words, write this down. What's my motive behind my prayer? What's my motive behind my prayer? Why am I praying what I'm praying? Is it for you to get what you want? Or is it for God to get the glory out of it? Because see, a prayer life is this. God, Lord, I'm here for you. And Lord, if this don't work out, that's okay. I'm still here for you. See, a mature Christian, when they pray, they don't pray that, Lord, I I need this and I need that and I want that. There is a difference between a need and a greed. A lot of people pray out of greed. But we got to learn to pray out of a need. God says, I will meet and supply all of your needs. Not your greeds, but your needs. God says, if the birds have a place to, to lay their head at night, and, and if, if your barns have, have enough room to, for, for, to fill that, God says, how much do I love them? I love you so much more. First of all, you've got to realize that God wants to answer your prayers. And listen to me. God answers all prayers. Listen to me. God answers all prayers. It may be a yes. It may be a no, or it may be a wait. Boy, don't y'all love them wait prayers? Lord, how mercy. Wait. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. I know that. Be still and know that He is God, Psalm 46.10. I know that. But boy, I don't like to wait. How about y'all? Boy, y'all like to wait? When you pray, God, change my children. And it'd be 15 years. (laughs) Hallelujah. 15 years. But what God is telling me about my prayer life, and I'm laying my heart out to you tonight, is that what is your motive behind your prayer? It's not if you pray, it's when you pray. God said, bring me all your stuff. This is one thing I had to learn the hard way, Dixie. I just used to bring God all my good stuff. Lord, I was at church today. Lord, I put my tithe in the offering plate today. Lord, I'm in revival all this week. You don't think he knows that? He knows it all. But here's what really changed my life. When I had a pastor look at me, and he said, Brian, God wants to know about your wounds too. He wants to know about your hurts too. God loves you so much, he'll listen to you. And so what we've got to learn, if you want a good prayer life, it is okay to cry. It is okay to bow down, there's different types of prayer. I wish I could get into this tonight because there's so much to teach on this. But there are different ways to pray. 
Some people lay flat on their face, and that's in the Bible. Some people kneel and pray. Some people raise holy hands and pray. Some people just sit there like this and pray. But no matter how you pray, just pray. Just pray. I found out one time I went over at my father-in-law's house, and I went in. He wasn't there to be found. And um, I asked Peggy, I said, where's, where's Bobby? And she said, He's out in the woods. And I'm like, well, do I ask why he's out in the woods? Or, but uh, she said he's out there praying. And I'm going to be honest with you, Bobby. I sat there and I'm like, why is he praying in the woods? I, did, I was brought up very religious. I'm not going to lie to you. If you didn't have a suit and tie on, if you didn't have a King James Translation Bible, watch this, the church I came from, you couldn't even take the offering up unless you had a suit on. What's this? If you was a divorced person, the church I came from, you couldn't serve. That's how I was brought up. And Bobby, you know that. Because it took me, me asking Bobby a thousand and one questions. Now, I know Bobby's not God. But I will tell you this one thing I know about my father-in-law. He does have a working relationship with Jesus Christ. He does have a prayer life. He does have a close connection. So I found out really quick, I don't want to hang around them type of people. If I get sick in my body, I don't want somebody praying over me who don't know how to pray. Lord, if it be your will, let them live. There I am, sick as a dog in the hospital. Somebody come in there and say, boy, you look bad, do you think? And people will come up and they want to lay hands on you and pray. And this, that, and the other. Watch this. Here's what I know in my life after studying the Bible. It is God's will for me to live. But Satan wants me to die. So what I have learned in my life is I've got to have a prayer closet. I went out to the woods, and, and <laughs> I don't know if you remember this or not. I went out there, and, and Bobby has a sign. Up in, in the woods, it says, take off your shoes because this is holy ground. Now, he gets that out of Exodus chapter 3 when Moses went up to the burning bush. He had a prayer time with God, and God told Moses, Moses, you take your shoes off. Lord, if somebody comes into church today and takes their shoes off, we're sitting there going, what are they doing? What are they doing? That's why I love when Troy Long came and preached to her, he took his shoes off. And Troy said this way, he said, man, I preach this the way I preach. Because this is what God told me. So you've got to get a working relationship with God, what God tells you, what God's telling you, what, what's going on between you and the Lord. And I went out there and Bobby told me, he said, take your shoes off. And I'm like, what? He said, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. This is my praying ground. And I'm going to be honest with you. My, a little rebellion come up in my heart. And I was sitting there going, I don't want to take my shoes off. He said, take your shoes off. He's hard headed as I am. And all of a sudden, I took my shoes off. And we sat there, and something happened that day. I finally seen a man in the presence of God. Here's what I learned in my life. If I'm going to have a good, successful home, my children have to bust me praying. Now, that's not for me to get the glory or anything like that, but I'm asking you this. When was the last time you walked into a room and found your spouse on their knees praying? So I had to learn this because I was brought up that, man, God's going to whip me. God's mad at me. God don't like me. If I do this, I got to get saved all over again. And I was a mess. I was. I was a mess. I didn't know what to believe. Until I started studying and praying and asking God questions on my own. And God started revealing to me, Brian, there's more to it than all these things that are being said about me. I am a God that loves you. I am a God that died for you. I am a God that has the resurrection power. I didn't even believe in the Holy Ghost. I'm being honest with y'all tonight. I didn't believe in Him. I never Watch this. The church I was raised in, they never taught on the Holy Spirit. Tongues died out. Peter really wasn't water. And the, and the church that I was raised up in, here's what they said. It really wasn't a Red Sea event. They said it was only a couple inches of water. And all y'all looking at me saying, Brian, what's happened? Let me go ahead and tell you, sweet hour of prayer. Let me go ahead and tell you, when you get in God's presence and God gets in you, He starts changing you from the inside out. You give Him your ears and your heart and your life, and things start changing. And y'all just get the, get the result of it. 
So what I'm trying to tell you is tonight, when you pray, you got to ask yourself, why am I praying? Because that's what mama told you to do. See, that's where I come from. I knew in my mind it was right to pray. But I just didn't know how to pray. And isn't it amazing in Luke chapter 11, Greg, the disciples said his word, Lord, teach us how to pray. The disciples who walked with God said, Lord, teach me how to pray. So I think you've got to ask yourself here tonight in this small setting, what's your motive? Why are you praying? What are you going to... Listen, what, is it about you surrendering? Is it about putting a check mark beside your name? Or why are you praying? What is your motive behind your prayer? Is it to be seen? This is hard, but it's so true. Is it to be seen? Is it to be heard? And if it is, here's what God said. That's your reward. That's your reward. The hardest thing is for a pastor that I deal with that a lot of pastors may not tell you is pride. It's pride. Because if you've got a successful church, which I think Elkhorn's very successful, God's grown as we've seen over 500 salvations. But one thing that God deals with me on every single day is pride. You know, when someone comes up to you and says, boy, you've done a great job, that, that boosts your ego. It really does. It boosts your ego. Now, I know y'all don't deal with stuff like this, and I know I'm talking probably to myself, but that's just something I deal with. I think everybody here deals with something. But what I'm trying to tell you, one thing that helps me to get that pride back down is this. It's called humbleness. God will put me in my place. He will cut my feet of clay out from underneath me, and something will happen that will bring me on my knees, whether I like it or not. See, a lot of times I think God allows. I don't think God, God does a lot. I don't think God does, brings on sickness. Watch this. I'm going to bust this lie. I'm going to bust this lie. Y'all ready for this? I don't think God brings on sickness. I don't think God intended for people to die and go to hell. I don't. But I really believe God uses that. God uses sickness sometimes in your life to bring you closer to him. God allows a bankruptcy to bring you closer to Him. God will allow a marriage that has fallen apart, but you'll see the grace of God just come back in and invade your privacy. And next thing you know, where you was weak, now you're strong. God will allow a situation to come in your life to be a stepping stone in your life to get you where He needs you to be. Does that make sense? How do we pray? What do we pray? What's your motives behind your prayer? Second thing is this. I think it's so important. It's not just what your motives are, but what, what's your location? What is your 1020? Listen to me. I know that you can go down the road praying, but I'm talking about the intimacy of God. I'm talking about you, what the Bible says, go into this closet. He, and, and this picture was that a man had a closet. He literally, that was his safe haven. That's where he went when he went to get into the presence of God. He went to the room. He found a closet. He opened the door. And he got in there and he closed the door. He was in a closet. A lot of people do that today. They think you're weird. I'm telling you what I really believe. Listen to me. What's your location? I have some friends who sell real estate. And here's what they'll tell you. The most important thing when you sell real estate is find prime location. You find what's going to sell. You go where it's at. And Dr. Henry Blackaby said these words in experiencing God. He said, you find God, you go where God's working. You join where God's at. You know why Elkhorn is growing? It's not because of my, my big mouth and the praise team. It's because God is being lifted up and he is drawing people into his own kingdom. That's why we're growing. It ain't about me and you. It's about what God is doing. And people are curious. They're saying, they're going, man, what's going on? And I had a man come to me this last week and he said, man, he said, explain what's going on at Elkhorn. I said, I can't. I can't. I said, you just got to come experience it. 
And so what I'm telling you right now in your prayer life is these words. It's of wisdom that I can give you from right from my heart. You can't teach about prayer enough. You can't talk about prayer enough. You've got to experience prayer in your life. You've got to experience an outpouring of God. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There, it doesn't mean that some people have more of God and less of God or this church is this and that church is that. No, they have surrendered. They've died to their own self-will. And if I can tell you one of the most valuable lessons I have learned in praying is that you've got to die. You've got to get out of the way. You've got to get your way of thinking out of the way. You've got to surrender your way of thinking and then God will bless you. God will bless you. I'm going to be honest with you. I never thought Elkhorn would look like this. I had my ideas. But sometimes I think, I think God will allow us to go through some things to teach us a valuable lesson from His Spirit. How many of y'all believe God still speaks? I think that's, listen to me. I think you've got to answer this question before you even start praying. <laughs> before you even pray. You've got to settle in your heart and in your spirit that God has a voice. Y'all hearing me tonight? I know this is a teaching, but I want I to teach you tonight. Because what God is telling me is that, I'm telling you, is that if you don't have the knowledge, Satan will come in and he'll sift it away from you. But if you have knowledge, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And you know what's powerful? When you take this Bible, and even though you don't understand it, Jeremy, but you can take this Bible and say, God, I don't understand it, but I believe it. There's power in that. So the question you've got to ask yourself tonight, does God still speak? Huh? How you know? How you know? How y'all know God still speaks? There you go. You got, listen to me, I'm going to help y'all tonight. I used to be ashamed. And God, I'm sorry. It took me a long time to be able to express my heart like this. And that God's still working on me. But I used to be ashamed. When people say, can you hear his voice? I'd lie. Uh-uh. Because you know why I thought they would look at me? And I, I thought that they would say, well, you just old, old Jesus freak and this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. And they would talk about me and this, that, and the other. And it took me a while to cut all this stuff out of my life. And now today, and I apologize to the Lord for that. Because let me tell you something, he does have a voice. He can speak. He still does speak. There's still miracles going on today. There's still healings going on today. His Spirit said, if I've done it yesterday, I'll do it today. He wants to speak to you tonight. The problem is this. We're not giving Him our ears. We're so concerned about what others think. I was. And boy, God will put you in a tight spot. He'll square you up. But you've got to ask yourself this tonight. Does God still speak? And if you say yes, number two is this. Have you heard his voice? I'm going to square y'all up tonight. You say, Brian, what does it sound like? I'm going to be honest with you. You can't explain it. Sometimes he'll speak through people. Sometimes he'll speak through his word. Sometimes he'll speak through just an accident or whatever. Sometimes, man, when you're sitting in church, let me tell you how God speaks. Let me tell you how God speaks. Somebody be sitting over here, and there's somebody else to be over here, and God will say, go pray for him. Go pray for him. Do you think the devil wants you to go pray for somebody? And do you think that you really want to go pray for somebody in the flesh? No. So God's voice will echo over everything. It's a personal hearing. And you'll hear his voice. He'll say, go pray for them. Go do this. Go do that. I, I never got, man, I can tell y'all story after story after story, but I'm not. I'll give you one, though. I was sitting in church before, and I don't have a lot of money. And God says, you give that boy $20. I'm like, Lord, he's got a job. <laughs> I know y'all don't act like I do. 
Because, listen, God's got ears too. And God's not sitting on a cloud floating by saying, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. God, watch this, y'all. We're going to mess y'all up. I'm going to mess y'all really up right now. He's here. Woo! He's here right now. Ah! I know I want to preach. That. I want to. He's here. He's sitting there. He's sitting right there. He's in here. How many of y'all feel him? See, that's, that's where you can say, man, I feel the Lord. I feel something on me right now that I've never felt before. That's called his sweet presence. And God wants this from you. You've got to make time for God because God made time for you. I'm asking you tonight. I don't care if there's 20 people. All it takes is two. Me and God are two. And we can do some amazing things together. I'm asking you right now tonight, while you got your notes open, I want you to mark off a time every day. This is my day. This is when I'm going to pray. And then you've got to ask yourself, if I'm not hearing God, something's not right. Now listen to me. I'm tired of all this fluff gospel preaching. Everybody says, yeah, God's got a voice. Have you heard him? See, Travis, thank you for being honest. Because that's awesome. When you can come to church and say, no. Let me ask them, have you ever asked, Lord, I want to hear your voice? See, guys, this is where prayer becomes intentional. This is where when you get in that closet and God is consuming you, it's not about you. It's like, God, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. And I know that my daddy still speaks. You say, Brian, how you know? I talked to him this morning. I felt him all day. I went home. I can't run away from his presence. I've, I am ate up. I am consumed. I am addicted to Jesus Christ. And I can't get enough of him. People look at me and say, well, I want what you've got. You've got what I've got. But what I want to tell you guys, you've got to go into your room. You've got to close the door. You've got to pray. And here's how I found this to be so true. I can go on. But listen. Same way with me and Dana. How many of you know that me and Dana, listen, it's a good word. Me and Dana can communicate, but we can never connect. Listen to me. I'm going to teach you tonight. You can speak to God, but some of you may not be connecting to God. There is a difference. There is a difference between communicating and connecting. When you start connecting to the presence of God, watch this. You'll start living like Him. You'll start talking like Him. You'll start acting like Him. You'll go. When He says go, you'll say, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go. If it's Russell County, I'll go Russell County. Do y'all really think I wanted to go to Russell County? Dana, did you want to really want to go? Lord God, that's some of the biggest fights we got into. What's God? Listen to me. Be careful what you pray. God, I'll go. Send me where you want me to go, Lord. Blessed be the name. Go Russell County. What? Lord, they roll the streets up at 8 o'clock. They ain't even got Walmart, but got Big K. That's good. And here God picked me up from a church that I love called Elkhorn Baptist Church and put me over there, and I love them people, but guess what? I missed home. And so, man, listen, I'm just trying to tell you, I'm trying to help you guys tonight. Be careful what you pray. What's your motives behind your prayer? And when you get down nitty-gritty, does God still speak? Yeah, he still speaks. Have you heard his voice? I don't know, not really. Ask him. You have not because you ask not. James chapter 4, verse 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've got to, watch this. You've got to, you've got to start connecting to God. You know when my marriage started really flourishing? When I started connecting to Dana. And I'm not talking the bedroom. Some of you gurus out there are going, Yeah, me too. Blessed be the name. <laughs> y'all, don't y'all lie. It's the way, yeah. Hallelujah. Put a ring on it. 
What I'm trying to say, I believe there's a lot of churches got a lot of lip service going on. I'll do it, I'll go, I'll do whatever you ask me to do, God, and God tells you what to do, then you're looking for a plan B. Last point's this, I'm done. What do you pray? What do you pray? Be honest with God. Watch me. If you're mad, God knows you're mad. You say, Brian, I just don't know about that. Listen, I, I do believe there's a righteous anger. I do. I believe in something called a righteous anger. Jesus Christ himself went to the temple because they made the temple into a house of thieves. And let me tell you something. God's no joke. <laughs> he sat down and said he made a whip. He made a whip. He was going to go whip them. Sitting there making a whip. Looked at the temple. And there they were inside. Had to sacrifice sheep, the lambs. And they were selling them. It says God walked into the temple. He turned over the tables. And he said, get out. He drove them out of the church. See, where I differ with a lot of people, I believe in church discipline. I do. I believe in church discipline. And I believe there comes a time when you've got to discipline people. God disciplines me, so why in the world would I not, would we, do we not believe in church discipline? But you've got to be honest with God. Your concerns, your heart, your happiness, your, your sadness, your joy, whatever. And listen, prayer's not about you getting what you want. We say this all the time. Prayer is, is about what God, God needs you for you to do. And here's what I wrote down in my notes, and I want to give you this. Prayer is not about asking. Listen to me. It's about aligning yourself. Boy, that's a good word if y'all get that in y'all's spirit tonight. Watch me. It's about me aligning myself up with Jesus Christ. That's why Matthew said, go to the room, find a closet, put yourself in that closet, and shut out the world. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shut out the world. Shut out the world. Get away from the worldly things. And God says, there's got to come a time when you align yourself up with me. And there's different types of prayer. I could go on and on and on about this, but I'm not. Public prayer is fine, but I'm asking you tonight, what about the closet prayer? I'm talking about your prayer time with God. How much time do you spend in the presence of God? Not about a, a greed, but about, about a need. Shutting the door and finding the presence of the Lord. Listen to me. Aligning yourself up with the presence of Jesus Christ. I guess this. Praise team, y'all. Come on. What are you going to pray when God gives you the nod? What are we going to pray when God says, it's you. It's you. I believe God is nodding tonight saying, you know what, I want more of you. I want more of you. I know we say this all the time, but God wants more of you. What's your motive? What's your location? And what are you praying that's the three things God laid on my heart to give you tonight. What's your, what's your motive? Why are you asking what you're asking for? And dude, I'm telling you right there, that's a powerful point. The Bible, you know what God says in James? He said these words. He said, the reason why I, don't, I, I say no to some of your prayers is because you're asking amiss. You're asking for a, a personal gain that won't be a kingdom advantage. Golly, it's so good. You know when you'll move heaven? When you align yourself up with God and say, God, and this is hard to say. But Lord, with or without my wife, I'll serve you. Lord, with or without my job, I'll serve you. So many people go in panic mode. You know why? Because they base their happiness upon a worldly standard. They base their happiness upon a worldly standard. People go, come, they get frazzled if something happens to them in their life. But Lord, with my wife or without my wife, I'll serve you. 
It's going to be hard, God. It's the truth. Lord, I'd like to serve the rest of my life with her. I, I love her. You see what I'm saying? You just got to get open with God. You got to share your heart with Him. Now, what if I got up here and said, Well, blessed be the name. God, it's all about you. I'll do what you want me to do, and I'll go where you want me to go, but Lord, let me pick the location. I've prayed like that. I am learning so much as a student of God. The biggest lesson I'm learning is this. Love God, love people, and let God take care of the people. Here's what I found out. I can't fix you. I can't fix you. I can preach till I'm Barney Purple in the face. I've done that before this morning. But the bottom line is this. How much time are you spending in the presence of God? You know why there's bad attitude in church? Uh Uh-oh. People are not spending the time in the presence of God. They're not. You know why there's church splits? You can't tell me. Let me me dig a little deeper. You can't tell me people who are born again and saved by the blood of God, Christian men and Christian women, and something happens in the church that they can't talk. I've never understood that. I'm just sitting telling you tonight, with God, all things are possible. I'm sitting and telling you tonight, if you find the sweet presence of God, align your body up with that cross with heaven and say, God, this is my heart. This is where I'm at. This is why I'm mad. This is what's going on in me, God. I know it's, a, I know it's me. What I have found when I'm mad, God's trying to cut me and I'm trying to cut somebody else. Oops. So, man, where, I hope y'all got this word. I didn't want to go this long, but y'all just bring the preacher out of me. <laughs> Sweet hour of prayer. So I'm opening this altar up. I don't know how much time you spent in the presence of God today. I don't. I don't know. But I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ, as God's church, God's people, you want a hot, steaming, rocking marriage? All the men should say amen. If you, Shane, if you want that, she's got to see Jesus in you. I'm going to tell on Dana I'm done. I asked Dana one time, Travis, I said, Honey, I said, what turns you on? Now, I know y'all sitting there going, all the religious people are going, Oh, my God. I asked her that question. You know what she told me? She said that you're a man of God. And I was like, really? I was wanting to hear something else, you know? (laughs) My highlights, bam, bam, or something. But she said, it blesses me knowing that my husband loves the Lord. Knowing he's sold out, madly crazy, deeply in love with God. That's what blesses me. That's what turns me on. And so guess what I found? I just worship him more. (laughs) I love you guys. I really do. I love you. It's a joy being your pastor. But here's the deal. We got to start praying more. Got to start praying more. Got to start praying more. We say, Brian, I pray 20 minutes a day. Whoop-dee-doo. Give God more. You want more of him? He's got to have more of you. Sweet our prayer. You come to this altar tonight. Maybe you want to take your, bring your wife up here. We got a small group in here tonight. Me, when was the last time you grabbed your wife by the hand and said, Honey, I'm going to pray tonight. That may give her a heart attack, so be careful. Maybe you just want to grab somebody and say, You know what? I'm sitting by myself tonight, and I'm going to pray with you. Oh, sweet our prayer. I don't know about you, but I'll meet you at the altar. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, tonight you taught us about prayer. Why do we ask what we ask? What's our motive behind our our agenda? God, I love you. May we take our shoes off tonight. Because this is holy ground. 
May we feel you rise up in this house again. Lord, I love you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you, Lord. I can worship you freely. I thank you, Lord, that for a church that's sold out, that loves each other, God, and we're getting stronger and closer every moment of every day. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Guys, let's go to this altar tonight. Bring your wife with you. Bring somebody with you. And let's just find the Lord tonight. Amen? Let's just find the presence of God. You come.